This is my version of the uh, clink hammer, or as I like to call it, the big clink. The reason I call it that is because I rarely fish it in any other size than a size 10. At that size, I've often found it's a great fly for drawing fish to the surface when I'm prospecting or fishing blind with a dry fly in areas where you'd expect fish to be. And, for the same reason, it's my go-to fly as an attractor stroke indicator when fishing New Zealand dropper, duo, dry dropper, clink and dink, or whatever you choose to call it. So I've got a size 10 Camazon B100 in the uh, vise, and I'm starting with a tying thread about 3mm back from the eye, and I'm just winding it down the hook shank to attach it. At this point I'm not going all the way down, I just want to wind enough on to attach the thread and form a base for the uh, wing post. So that should do about there. I'll come back up in open turns and stop three to four millimeters back from the eye of the hook. I like the post relatively dense, so how much poly yarn you use will depend on where it's from, what make it is. Um, in this particular instance, I think it's Semperfly, and this is about one and a half strands. So I'm just holding the poly yarn on top of the hook shank and making four or five turns to secure it. And then before I let go, I'm going to cut away the unwanted butt. You can see I'm holding the scissors at an angle, so I form a tapered cut, which will help when we form the abdomen. You'll see now as I fasten that down, it'll just taper away. That's nicely tapered, I'm happy with that. Before I go any further, I'll just check the wing position or post position, make sure I've got enough of a gap between the post and the eye. And now I'm angling the hook in the vise so that I can carry on down the shank with the thread without it slipping. That's it, I'll angle it once more. This is just so that the thread doesn't slip as you go around that bend. And now I'm in that position, we're ready for the uh, abdomen. So now I'm going to twist some dubbing onto the uh, thread and then work my way back up the hook shank towards the post, forming a tapered abdomen as I go. In this particular instance I'm using Awesome Possum, but any relatively coarse dubbing like rabbit or hair could be used and I don't worry if there's a few fibres sticking out. Um, one or two stray fibres might just give the impression of movement or life as the fly hangs below the meniscus. So I've put that piece of dubbing on. Now I'll just reposition the hook and all I'm going to do as I go around uh, or as I work my way back to the post is keep repositioning the hook as I go and eventually it'll be sitting horizontal or relatively horizontal. While I'm building the abdomen, I'd just like to mention something that I'm pretty sure I've mentioned in previous videos, and that is to try not to be over generous with your dubbing. In my opinion, there are no shortcuts with this process, and you have much more control as you build your fly if you stick to little and often with dubbing. It's much easier to add more if you need it than it is to take away if you've been overly generous.
So that's the uh, hook just about back to its original position. Just need a little bit more dubbing on the abdomen and we'll be up to the area that we're going to leave free for the thorax. We'll be stopping about two millimetres short of the uh, post. That's it, and now we're just going to get the post to stand up. So to do that, we're just going to stroke it back and take a couple of turns around the base. I should just get it sitting a bit more vertical. And now I'm going to take a few wraps between the base of the post and the eye, just to form a base for tying in the hackle. And I'll take a few right at the base of the post. That's nice, and now we're ready to uh, fasten the hackle in. The hackle I'm using for this is a genetic saddle hackle, but any reasonably long fibred hackle will do. Uh, to prepare the hackle for tying in, I'm just going to strip away enough fibres at the base of the stem to leave a section of about 6 to 8 millimetres clear. And now I'm going to hold the hackle against the hook with the outside uh, sorry inside or dull side facing up I'll take one turn behind the post and then a few turns in front of the post and over the stem to fasten it in now I'm going to hold the hackle vertical and take a couple of wraps around the base of the post and that'll just get it sitting upright now I'll take the hook and reposition it so that the post is sitting in a horizontal position and now making sure that the hackle is the inside of the hackle or dull side again is facing into the post I'm just going to take a few turns around the base of the post and the hackle stem to tie it in this is also creating a bed for uh, winding the hackle in later. I'm going to come a reasonable distance up the post because when it comes to tying in the hackle later I want to give myself enough room to make about five or six turns of hackle. Now I'm going to come back down in open turns to the base of the post, reposition the hook in the vise and now we're ready for the uh, thorax. I'll just lower the vise so you can see a little bit better. Right, I'm just going to take the thread forward to just behind the eye and then we're going to use some uh, peacock eye stub to form the thorax. Just twist that dubbing on to the thread. And then we're going to work back towards the post, forming the uh, thorax as we go. That 
that's it and come behind the post and just fill that area there that's it there's just a little gap at the base of the post that needs filling up so we'll add a little bit more ice stub fill that area and that should be it That's it, that's that filled in. Take a wrap around the base of the post and now we can reposition the hook in the vise ready for winding the hackle in. Just want to check the hackles in the right position. If we've tied in correctly, the inside or dull side should be facing up, and the shiny side or outside should be facing down towards the hook. Now we'll just take a extra couple of wraps up the post to form a base for winding the hackle in, and then come back down to the bottom with the thread. I'm just going to put a dab of varnish on that uh, area just to seal it. That's it and now we're ready for winding the hackle in. Um, with these genetic hackles they're quite long so I don't really need hackle pliers. If it was a shorter one you could use hackle pliers. And all I'm going to do now is come down that thread base in touching turns with one wind underneath the other right down to the thorax. I like to do about five or six turns. And now we're in that position I'll take a couple of wraps to tie it off Snip away the unwanted hackle. And now I'm going to do a five or six turn whip finish and then remove the thread. That's it and now I'm just going to use my scissors to control that loop of thread as I pull it in to the base and finish off the whip finish. And snip that thread away now and there's just a couple of stray hackle fibres that I'm going to snip away. That's it, and now we're ready for some varnish to uh, seal that whip finish. So I'm just going to put a couple of dabs of varnish on each side to seal that thread. Just being careful not to get any varnish onto the uh, hackle fibres. position that and make it a bit easier. That's it. And now I'll reposition that fly 
in the vase and we're ready to uh, trim the post as far as trimming the post goes I like to keep the post as long as possible I mean at the end of the day it's a sighter if you're fishing fast water I want to be able to see that post it might be the only thing I can see if a fish takes so I want to keep it as long as possible without it overbalancing the fly I usually find that if I hold it back and cut it approximately level with the rear of the hook that will give me a, a decent length post and it won't cause any problems with the fly tipping over when it's in the water and that's it There you go, that's the clink hammer or my big clink. That post is maybe just a touch longer than I'd like. I'm just going to trim a little bit off the top. And that'll be the fly finished. There you go, that's better. Another little spin in the vice for you. So that's my version of the clink hammer, or as I like to call it, the big clink. And as I mentioned at the start, apart from using it on its own when prospecting with a dry fly, I also use it as an attractor stroke indicator with a nymph suspended below it. And for that reason, I want to be able to see it at all times. So I tie it with different coloured posts to suit different conditions. This is another fly that's proved very successful for me over many years, so if you do decide to try a few, I hope that they work for you.